Hello, everybody. Rod Baker. God and Rod. And um, <clears throat> I, my voice is a little uh, strained. Um, last night, uh, actually the last two nights, I've been um, working on downloading the book onto my computer verbally. And so, as you can probably tell, there were a couple of times that, that I thought maybe I needed to raise my voice to the computer so it would understand what I was saying. Well, it doesn't. As a matter of fact, the more I raise my voice at the computer, the more the wrong words come out. <laughs> lesson learned <clears throat> but I did want to get on here and do a quick video because there's a couple of things that I wanted to talk about the first one is is man my new buddy Ryan uh, the hair place up on um, the barbershop up on Britain Road man he I haven't had this good of a cut I told him since 2018 I haven't been this clean. I mean, he cleaned me up good. I am aerodynamic, which is what's important. Um, and that, you know, if, if I'm going to look good, I'm going to look good to me. If you guys think that I look good, that's great. But as long as, as I think I look good, that's what matters. If I can't love me, I can't love you. Right? If I can't tell me no, no, I can't tell you no. Do you know how many people I know, <laughs> no, have known that they are incapable of telling themselves and others no? In recovery, we deal with it all the time. We deal with it all the time. There's something on our coins, on our chips that say to thine own self be true. If you can't tell you no, no, I will not have sex with this person or no, I will not go rescue somebody or no, I will not loan you money. No, I will not accept your apology. No, I will not allow you in my presence or my energy or to speak to me ever again. No. If you can't tell yourself no, you're sure not going to tell everybody else. Which brings us to what I really wanted to talk about. I continue to study, whether it be books from, well, as a matter of fact, I started reading some Latin, and uh, it's just not as clear. <laughs> Those Romans just are not as, as clear as we Americans are, or at least in Oklahoma. We're pretty clear when we talk, right? If we talk. If you don't talk, if you don't say anything, then guess what? Nobody's going to know where you stand. So, my point being is that I wanted to read from, uh, from the book of 1 Samuel today. Just a couple of little little verses and in doing so I'll give you the background information about these two little scriptures but I want to point something out here in 1st Samuel chapter 16 and hey Ryan thank you thank you brother for taking good care of me chapter 16 verse 14 it says, 
But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Now, Saul was the king of Israel. He's the very first king. But you know what? Pride got in the way of Paul. Or Saul, I'm sorry. And got in the way of Saul. Pride. Same thing that cast Lucifer out of heaven. Same thing that made Jonah refuse to go to Nineveh. The same thing that caused Saul before he was Paul in the New Testament to kill Christians. The same thing that caused the same thing that caused the son of perdition we all know who that is right the betrayer remember who that was <clears throat> caused him to turn Jesus in some people think it's greed but it wasn't his pride he wanted to be proud because, see, he thought that if Jesus got, arrest, got arrested, that he would call down the angels and wipe out the Romans and he would be the hero. It was pride. Pride cometh before the fall. And it never fails. You can guarantee it as much as you can gravity. Gravity. You can guarantee it. Gravity falls, things fall, things of a right way fall 32 feet per second. That's gravity. That's the law of gravity. What goes up must come down. So I read this. Saul was the king of Israel. God's chosen people. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. And an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. An evil spirit from the Lord. Huh. Let's go on down here. And Saul's servants, King Saul, called Saul's servants said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. There's a reckoning going on. Everybody's looking for a rapture. Well, about 90% of the people that talk about a rapture and, and, uh, them being pulled on up or wherever they so desire to go. You can't even obey God here. What makes you think he's going to trust you there? Wherever's next. If I were God, I would probably send your spirit into a cow and make you live a whole nother lifetime as a cow in Texas. <laughs> in Texas. Because if you can't obey God now, if you can't set some eternal principles based on, it doesn't even have to be the Bible, but just good common sense where you're not lying, where you're not thieving, where you're not betraying Judas, where you're not out having sex with people that you wouldn't give them the code to your phone.
at a time that <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what time it is. You know, when when you have consented sex with someone. And there's no covenant, there's no oath. There's no righteousness to it. It's, you know, you might as well go to the gym. If you're that active. If you just lay there, then I, you know, you might as well take a nap. But anyway, the point of it is this. If you think that consented sex between two people is okay, then you're just not seeing which one it is that's being manipulated, coerced. See, you're involving someone there. Now, you go out and you steal. You go out and you lie. You go out and, and you know, you bear false witness. But usually that's on somebody, but, you know, to deceive. Even blasphemy. That, that's on you, see? That's your undoing on yourself. When I would drink and do drugs, man, though I would fight a lot, I would fight a lot. But when I didn't, then I contained, that all contained on me. I owed myself an amends to that. See, when I went out, and I know these girls, there are these girls, and, and uh, matter of fact, I, I dealt with one a couple years ago that she could not understand the audacity of me fighting, but yet she'd lay with any, you know, she was a trisexual. She'd try anything. <laughs> but yet get on to me about fighting? How dare me f get in a fight? But yet she gave herself away all over town. I'm sure she's ill by now, I would think. Been a while since I've seen her. And I have no desire to. I mean, I'm, it is what it is. That's one of those kind of people who say, no, no, no. Not because I'm trying to control anything, but I'm putting boundaries up for me. These are my principles that I live by. And if you don't have any principles that you're willing to say no to people about, then guess what? They'll run all over you. They'll take everything you got. They'll cheat you. They'll steal from you. They'll, they'll, they'll deceive you all the time. You know why? Because you won't say no. You won't. You'd rather run off. You'd rather hide. And that's what they do. Those that do not say no. Saul did not say no. to the people when he said, when they said, should we keep these people alive? He said, no. Or, should we kill these people? It is what God, Samuel, the prophet, had told them that's what they were to do, is, is kill the people, the animals, all that. So when they said, when his soldiers said, should we kill them all? Saul said, no. No, pride got in the way. 
pride. Thought he knew better than God. If you think you know better than me, I'm okay with that. I am. But when your actions show me that you think you know better than God, I'm not going to have anything to do with you. I'm not going to have anything to do with you. You'll never be successful. You'll never be disciplined. You'll never have self-control. You'll never be a leader. You know, I've always thought it was funny, these people that try to have a business when they can't even manage their own finances at home end up filing bankruptcy two or three times. And they want to try to run a business? They can't even take care of their own finances at their house if they're working for somebody. And most of the time, they're probably cheating people out of money, stealing somewhere. They call it fraud. And guess what? It, it catches up. It catches up. As a matter of fact, I declare it catch up. Yeshua, whole, Hadon. I declare. I call for judgment on your fraud. On your fraud. On your fraud of people. On your fraud of federal government, state government, your clients, your customers, fraud. And there may be some children involved, wouldn't you think? Some teenagers? Yeah, probably. You frauded them, didn't you? Hmm? Lied to them? You know what you did. I called judgment. No she now I can see now. I call on your ancestors to call for judgment. May the spirit of truth bring to light what you have done in the dark. I was telling somebody today how <clears throat> difficult it can be coming so far in life, being so different than what I started out as, or was as a teenager or young man. You know, godly integrity. Godly integrity brings godly protection brings godly prosperity blessings good fruits gifts even gifts brings gifts so as you find yourself in those moments, of fear, trepidation, worry, guilt. Oh, here's a good one. Here's a good one. Remorse, regret. And because you've never held yourself accountable or been held accountable, you don't even know how to apologize. Wow. You don't even know how. You don't know how to make an amends. For any of you out there that don't know how to make an amends, give me a call. Give me a call. 